Welcome to the XPath tutorial. What we'll be doing is giving you just a brief overview of XML or XPath, and then we'll dive into actually using XPath to query your data. So what is XML? Well, XML stands for Extensible Markup Language. It's a standard format that's used pretty broadly across the internet. Um, by definition, it's, it's machine readable or human readable. But what does human readable mean? Um, it just basically, XML is a set of nodes or tags. And within those nodes or tags, it's very obvious what the information that is within those tags, those nodes. XPath stands for XML path. It's a querying language that you can use to query the nodes or the information that you want to see within your XML file. So the first thing I want to do is show you the tool that's on the screen. It's called XML Choir. XML Choir is a free download. It's not really that intuitive, but I found it to be a great tool once you get used to it, and it's a great way to practice your XPath. So the next thing we want to do is actually load our XML file. The XML file that we'll use today is the southwind.xml file. It's just basically a cleaned up version of Microsoft's Northwind XML. So let's click on that. And as I mentioned earlier, we have some nodes. We see the Windward Studios root node, and below that we see the employees, which would be the parent node, and below that is the child, the employee child node. And you'll see that we have an attribute of employee ID, some last name, first name. As you can tell, it's very easy to identify what we're looking at because of the node or tags. So let's start using XPath to query our data. So I want to open up this window and expand it so you can see a little bit better. And let's kind of minimize that a little bit. Okay, so in order to get from one node to the next, we use the forward slash. So we'll start off with the forward slash and then we'll access our root node, which is Windward Studios. Windward dash studios. Forward slash, and then say we want to drill down a little bit further into the employees node. We'll do that and use another slash to drill even further down into the child node. Okay, so now you see that I have some data on the screen. We have nine results and all the information for all the employees in our XML file. Now you'll see it's kind of jumbled all together. Let's make that a little cleaned up by selecting just the last name. Okay, so we are only seeing the last name of all of our employees. We see that we have one employee called Dodsworth. Let's look more specifically at Dodsworth's information. How do we do that? Well, we use filtering. The next path to filter, you usually use the open and close brackets. So I'll use an open bracket and we'll type in the last name node and then we'll make that equal to single quote Dodsworth in single quote and then in a bracket. Now you can see that we have all the information for Ann Dodsworth. Okay, let's limit this information a little bit further. Let's just look at the city that Ann is in. And we see it's London. So this gives you a basic idea of how to filter and how to navigate between nodes. Let's try something a little bit different and uh, go back to the beginning. Um, on the left-hand side of the screen, again, we see their XML file has um, the employee ID of nine. What if we want to filter the information by this employee ID attribute? All we have to do is uh, select our forward slash, when word studios, dash studios, and then employees, then employee. Now, since we're filtering, we're going to use the open bracket. And because we're filtering by attributes of a node, we want to use the at sign. At sign lets XPath know that you're looking at the attributes. We'll select employee ID equal 
equals four. Close bracket. Now we have all the information for Margaret Peacock. What if we only want to look at Miss Peacock's last names? We can actually drill down further and we see Miss Peacock's last name. Okay, so now let's pretend we want to search some order information. So we'll start over. I'll delete this. And something that XPath also does is it allows you to quickly access your root node, which would be Winward Studios, by just just typing slash slash. So it makes it quite easy to do that. So let's do that this time and select the orders node. Now it took a second to bring back results. That's because it's bringing back all the orders, 830 to be exact, and all the information within those orders. So you can see this be pretty large result set. But let's filter that order information. And let's pretend we only want to see the orders for Margaret Peacock. We can, if we remember our employee ID, we can set that to four. And now we have retrieved all the orders for Ms. Peacock. Total 156 and all that information. But what if we want to look at a specific order? As you can see, we have order IDs on the left-hand side. Order ID is our attribute. So let's filter this by order ID. Say we only want to see order ID 10249. Close bracket. Now we have all the information for order ID 10249. So that's some basic filtering on XPath. Let's use, XPath also contains several functions. And one of the functions that I use the most is the concat function. It stands for concatenate. So what if we, uh, we saw that before we had employees with a first name and last name node. Well, let's combine the first and last name and actually format that to make it look more readable. So start over, and what we'll do is type in the concat function, function name, and when you use functions, you want to use open and close parentheses. So we'll use open parentheses, and then we want to select the first name of our employee. So we can use the slash slash to shorten it. Employees, slash employee. And we want to select the Margaret Peacock employee ID number four. So what we do is use our attribute symbol. Employee ID equals four. And we'll drill down into the first name. So next we need the last name. And we delimit our function by a comma which I can't select right now. Okay, so now, since we have drilled down, let's uh, select, let's copy this and paste it, and just simply change the first name to the last name. Now we'll close it with our close parentheses, and as you can see, we have concatenated the two nodes Margaret and Peacock. But as you can see, it looks jumbled together. So let's format that a little bit better. We can do that easily. We'll add a single quote, tick, tick, space, tick. And here's our space. So XPath has several other functions you can use. I'm just showing you the one that I use the most. Hope you enjoyed the video.